So one thing that is often a challenge in this course is dealing with the problems of rolling with and without slip. And again, the, the goal here is really just to talk about these two conditions. And I realized that at this point, you've talked a lot about rolling without slip, but not very much about rolling with slip. And it ends up being a question of how do you deal with this in that particular, or that particular case. So I have a wheel that's rotating on a surface. It maintains contact uh, with that surface. And what will happen is that if its motion, the motion is rolling without slip, that point of contact over here, which is given by that axial coordinate right here, there we go. The motion's rolling without slip if the point of contact between the floor and the, and the wheel don't move relative to each other. So if I write this in a, with a, oh, there's the floor, there you go. I'm good at writing all I need. There is velocity of G, the center of mass, and the wheel is, uh, the wheel is moving to the right. I have an axial system that's the standard one with positive being counterclockwise for the moment and x, y as shown in standard coordinates. But what happens is I can say, well, velocity of the point of contact C right there is going to be the velocity of floor plus velocity of contact with the floor, with respect to the floor. And so if I continue, if both are at the same velocity, velocity C and velocity of floor are uh, equivalent. Velocity of C with respect to the floor equals zero. Velocity of C with respect Velocity of C equals velocity of the floor. And so both are equal to zero. Velocity of C, okay, so that's standard, again, standard vector approach, is just going to be velocity of G plus omega of the wheel cross RC with respect to G. That's your standard expression uh, for relative velocity. Velocity C equals velocity G plus velocity C relative to G. We know that velocity of G, because it's at the center, is going to be in the i direction. Omega the wheel is going to be k. And in this case, it's a negative value, but it's okay, I'm not writing that down. Uh, and rc with respect to g is going to be negative r because it goes from g to point c. So that's uh, that That would be how you define it there. Velocity of floor velo equals velocity c, which equals zero. So I can say zero equals velocity g in the i plus omega of the wheel k cross with rj and minus rj. And if I do that, I end up with velocity g in the i direction equal plus omega i or omega of the wheel times r equals uh, zero. And so omega of the wheel is going to be minus vg uh, r. So kind of what I expect, and it's sort of how I draw it in, in this figure, but it will be a negative uh, value because it's clockwise. If I look at the uh, other terms, so if I look at acceleration, I still have the same conditions, and I'm going to leave everything as it is. And I'm going to uh, look at velocity C with respect to the floor. That's equal to zero. Acceleration tangential at the point of contact is the same because they're both moving uh, in the same direction. So acceleration C with respect to the floor in the T direction, tangential direction, is equal to zero. And so that kind of gives me a, a zero again. Uh, and both of those are equal at that point. And that's kind of one of those things where you have uh, a standard body and you you have two points in contact. You've seen this with gears. This is just taking it to a stationary surface. If you continue, again, you have acceleration g in the figure. Uh, you have velocity g and you have the uh, two directions. Uh, and then I haven't written a direction for rc with respect to g, but it points downwards. I can say velocity g equals velocity g i, rc with respect to g is minus rj, velocity of floor equals velocity c equals zero meters per second, and omega wheel, we've already calculated, minus vg over r, uh, k. Putting in the terms, acceleration c equals acceleration g, plus acceleration of c with, or g with respect to c 
or C with respect to G, excuse me, uh, tangential uh, plus acceleration C with respect to G, normal. So I have all the terms and you, you've broken them down already in these types of forms where you looked at this as the tangential component, this as your normal component. If you have any questions about this, there are other videos to look at uh, in terms of setting up these equations. The important thing here is recognizing where, these, where this is coming from. Acceleration g is equal to acceleration g in the i direction because it's constrained to move in i. It's, uh, the center of mass is a point that will always move in straight line motion. So substituting all, all the terms in, you get the acceleration of c, which is going to be acceleration of g plus acceler or angular acceleration of the wheel times r in the i direction, vg, over, vg squared over rj. Rolling without slip is going to mean, in addition to the velocity being the same at the floor and point C, that the tangential acceleration will be the same, and it's going to be zero in both cases. So acceleration C in the x direction equals acceleration floor in the x direction, which is equal to zero, uh, and x is the tangential direction in this case. So if I substitute in terms, I have to ensure that the acceleration tangential is equal to zero, so it's minus ag over r. Okay, that's no problem. And then finally, the acceleration of point C is only the normal acceleration, which is velocity of g squared over r. And so you have all of these terms that you can sort of use to. That was kinematics. And we haven't dealt very much up until this point in the course with kinetics. And now that you're in the rigid body kinetics portion of the course, you, you've got to recognize that the main condition for rolling without slip is that the friction force does not exceed the maximum possible coefficient of static friction. So now all of these problems that have mu sub s, mu sub k start to make more sense. And they follow along from, from looking at these problems. And a standard problem we look at is a cord is wrapped around the inner hub of a wheel and pulled horizontally with a force of 200 newtons. Here's the P equals 200 newtons. The wheel has a mass of 50 kilograms and a radius of gyration of 70 millimeters. Now, again, I can't stress this enough. Please know what a radius of gyration is. I'll use it in this problem. Uh, but this is one of those things that's really important to know. Knowing mu sub s equals 0.2 and mu sub k equals 0.15, so static friction is 0.2, kinetic friction is 0.15, determine the acceleration of g, which is the center of the wheel, and the angular acceleration of the wheel. So if you look at this slide, you now have the weight, which is acting downward, force, which is acting to the right, friction force, which is acting to the right, and normal force, which is acting upwards. You have x, y, and you have counter rotation. You assume rolling without slip, and so you start out by doing I sub G, which is alpha or mkg squared, kg being the uh, value you got for the uh, radius of gyration and mass of the spool. You should know this, so make sure you recognize where you're getting this. Ag, I'm not going to do this right now as a as a vector, but it's alpha r and 0.1 meter alpha. If I do some of moments about point C, it makes it a little bit easier. I've got everything except uh, P, which is uh, eliminated. So P becomes 200 times 0 0.04 meters. Uh, MAG is 0.1 meter and IG alpha. Substituting all the terms, I get alpha of 10.74 uh, rads per second squared clockwise. And I get AG, which is uh, 1.07 meters per second squared I to the right. If I look at the forces, I can say normal minus weight, normal equals mg, and I get 490.5 newtons acting upwards. If I then substitute in for, no, that was the wrong way around, if I look at the forces in x, I have force plus 200 newtons, and I get a force of minus 146.3 newtons for friction. Okay, no problem. Everything's looking good. Uh, so does it really roll without slip? If I do that and I compare the tangential reaction to the maximum follows possible friction force, force max is mu sub s times n, and that's 98.1 newtons. So the force of friction that I calculated 
is really going to be in the is going to be impossible. So rolling without slip is not going to occur. And what will happen here is that you'll notice this this friction force has now flipped uh, directions because in addition to rolling, it's now sliding to the right. And so the friction force has to oppose that motion. So friction force becomes a maximum value, mu k n, which is minus 73.6 newtons. I substitute in all the terms and I should put a minus right here. But it doesn't matter because I know what the directions are of this. Uh, and 200 newtons times 0 0.06 new, uh, meters. If I substitute in all the terms and everything is done, then I will end up with alpha of minus 18.94 rads per second squared counterclockwise. And if I substitute in for the forces in the x direction, I've got 200 newtons, I have the force of friction and I get an AG of 2.53 meters per second squared. Now, the only reason I'm doing this about G now is that everything is defined there. I have IG alpha plus MA times d sub g, d sub g in this case, the distance to g is zero. So it gets rid of the translation. Rolling without and with and without slip requires careful checking. You're gonna spend a lot of time on these problems. Uh, and I I find it's, it's hard to sort of run through them very quickly. Uh, and so I kind of encourage you to go back over the problems uh, and make sure you're, you're comfortable with what I did here. Solve for the case of no slip, then look at slip. You always do it the same way. It's the same procedure for all of these problems. It's also important, and, and it's something that sort of has been drilled into you probably by this point, you have to draw really good free body diagrams. The course depends on it. Your understanding of the course material depends on it also. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.